the entrance to this South African cave is a doorway to the ancient past, perhaps to the very dawn of humanity. Here's the half of the skull that we're going to be collecting right now. This is the top of the skull. Led by paleoanthropologist Lee Berger, an international team of researchers is investigating a treasure trove of one of the rarest and most sought after objects on Earth, fossil evidence of early humans. It's the richest early hominid site discovered in the history of the search for human origins on the continent of Africa. So rich that the whole excavation was documented in real time by the National Geographic Society. It took a highly specialized team of petite female researchers to navigate the dangerous squeeze into the main fossil chamber and recover these priceless artifacts. Making sense of them all will take years of study and analysis, but that doesn't worry Lee Berger. Don't tell anyone, but it's not really work. It's my passion, it's my hobby. I live to do what I do. He found the roots of that passion growing up in rural Georgia. I had always had this fascination with the outdoors. I would collected rocks, I would collected Native American artifacts like arrowheads and stuff. By the time I was I ready to go to college, I had thousands of artifacts that I would collected and assembled and, and cataloged. He was an Eagle Scout and president of the Georgia 4-H. I spent all my time outdoors. But you know, when you get older, you're kind of pushed towards convention. And after high school graduation, conventional wisdom led him to study pre-law at Vanderbilt University. Absolutely hated it. Confused, he ended up dropping out of school. And I'd come back and had basically walked out of college for no reason other than I wasn't doing what I love. But after working for a while at a local TV station, he gave it another try. I found a little university that I could afford called Georgia Southern University. And there I met these most extraordinary professors. And they turned me on to this concept of how you could make a career as a working scientist. And at the same time, I read a book called Lucy. And that was the beginning of my drive to get into paleoanthropology and to get to Africa. Donald Johansson's best-selling book about the discovery in Ethiopia of fossil remains of an early hominid called Lucy inspired Berger's imagination so much that he actually called Johansson up on the phone. And I said, I understand you're coming to uh, Savannah to speak, and I was wondering if you want to stay at my parents' beach house instead of a hotel. And he said, sure. The famous paleoanthropologist and the young student hit it off immediately, and Johansson arranged for Berger to attend the Harvard Kubi Fora Field School in Kenya. And this is where I wanted to be. I wanted to be in Africa to find fossils. And on my first morning, I couldn't even sleep, and I got up early, 4.30 in the morning, and there was a light on in the mess tent, and there was a man I met, and he started talking to me. He said, you know what? No one's going to get up for a while. You want to go with me? I'm going to go survey another area just after sunrise. And uh, I said, you know, of course I do. And he and I went out, and I had the most transformational morning of my entire life. And as we were walking back, we were 100 meters from the Land Rover, and I looked down, and there was a femur of an early hominid. My first morning on a site in Africa, I had found one of the rarest sought-after objects on the planet, one of these early hominids. Finally doing what he loved, Berger excelled at it. He moved on to graduate studies and later a faculty position at the University of the Witwatersrand in South Africa, just a short drive from the high plains west of Johannesburg that are known as the cradle of humankind, the world's richest, most explored early hominid site. He began using GPS satellite data and Google Earth to try and identify new fossil areas to study. That became an addiction of mine. I almost vanished from work going out and surveying. On a 2008 survey trip to the Valley of Malapa, he took his nine-year-old son Matthew with him. Matthew said, Dad, I found a fossil. I could see him kneeling down with a rock. I realized that his and my life were going to change forever. Because sitting in the side of that rock he was holding, I could see from five meters away a hominid clavicle. I turned it over, and there on the back was a jaw and a canine coming out of this rock. I was holding perhaps the rarest thing we can find, a partial skeleton. Excavations revealed one of the most spectacular finds in history. 
eventually we would have up to six skeletons lying on the surface at this site I would call Malapa. And in 2010, we named a new species, Australopithecus sediba. It was big news around the world, and even the subject of a 60 Minutes report. There's a face from 1.9 million years ago. How old is Moses? <laughs> a few thousand years. The new species may help illuminate the mysterious evolutionary gap between ape and human. And the rock that preserved the fossils also preserved organic matter like food particles lodged between 1.9 million year old teeth. Most remarkably, researchers think they've identified fossil hominid skin as well, the oldest ever found. It was the richest find in the history of the search for human origins on the continent of Africa. Good luck. Until yep. now. Hopefully in the next few hours, this skull, which is now 30 meters underground, will be seen on the surface in the science tent. Berger's November 2013 excavation at the Rising Star Cave in the Cradle of Humankind <laughs> uncovered more than 1,200 elements of dozens of individuals. Only painstaking analysis can tell us what species this is and where it fits on our family tree. There will be work for hundreds and thousands of scientists on every aspect of anatomy because this isn't going to be the last discovery. We're going to find more. I guarantee that.